my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna do a little bit of a different kind of video. This is a DIY video, and I have been totally inspired by the channel Do It On A Dime, so I'm gonna link to the video. Now, we have a kitchen table here that is in need of some love. So instead of buying a new kitchen table and set, I thought that I would try my DIY skills and kind of restore this video. So I found this video from Do It On A Dime and she used chalk paint to kind of give it that kind of like farmhouse feel, which I totally love. So I'm going to try this out and see how I do. But before we get into this video, if you're new to my channel, my name is Angela and I like to do videos on all things about motherhood, family and lifestyle. So I would love it if you guys would click that subscribe button. So I am not usually one to paint things, restore things, sand things. I have no problem putting furniture together, but restoring things I'm a little bit shy of. So this is our kitchen table. It is probably 14 years old now, 14 or 15 years old. The chairs are a mess. They're not comfortable. We've put some covers on them. The cushion's gone in all the chairs. My husband actually doesn't like our chairs, so we might be getting rid of these, but this table, it's still in good condition. It's just, it doesn't go with anything, so we don't like the paint. It's scratched, it's well loved. And then this. It's really scratched. It's really scratched. It's so, 100 years if you have it. So this little mark here. So you know you can get your kids those cute little like character placemats. You can get like Frozen or Minions. So we had one and the backing of it came off on the table. I've used everything. Baking soda, vinegar, Dawn, elbow grease. I've used magic erasers. I've used bounce sheets and nothing will get it off. So I think that I'm gonna try my hand at this DIY. I'm gonna go to Lowe's, get some chalk paint. I thought that I would film this and take you along with me. So let's go and see what we can figure out. All right, so I'm here at Lowe's and I'm gonna go in. I have my little list of things that I need. They sell the Velspar chalk paint. I think it's called Velspar chalked. And that's what the do it on a dime lady used and I'm so excited just to see what colors they have I'm kind of all over the map I'm not sure which color or direction we're gonna go so let's go inside and see what we can get I'm gonna be using this Valspar chalky finish paint and I'm gonna be using it in the color old locket it's kind of like this grayish which I thought would be really nice and then they recommend that you use 100% natural bristle paint brushes so I got two sizes I got two and a half angle and then I got a two inch angle. So we'll see if I chose right. Then you need some lint free. This is really important. Lint free painters rags. These were on sale. You can also just cut up a t-shirt that kind of does the same trick as long as it doesn't leave um, lint behind. That's really important. Then you need some polyurethane. You need some polyurethane top coat. Now, uh, it was recommended, Rust-Oleum has a really good one. At Lowe's, they only had this one, so this is the Minwax One Coat Polyurethane Important Clear Satin or a satin finish, so that's really important. And then, the last thing is some sandpaper. This is the contour sanding sponge in the 220 grade, and that is what uh, she recommended to kind of buff up the edges and give it that restored kind of modern farmhouse look. So step one, they say to clean your table and degrease your table. So obviously this table is 15 years old. So lots of love. So what I use to degrease it is this Lysol Kitchen Pro Power Degreaser. And I did like two rounds of it with just water and I'm gonna let it sit and fully dry. Then we're gonna get into step two. Mommy's little helper today. Yeah. So step two is to take those lint-free rags. So we've already degreased this table, so it's fully dry now. So I'm taking this lint-free rag, my little helper here, and we are just wiping down the table to make sure that there's no dust or residue or anything left over to make sure that it is a nice, clean surface ready for us to paint.
I have done my first coat. I'm not really sure. Mirror because isn't supposed to, I put it on too thick, but I don't know. So I put on one layer and then I'm gonna let this dry and then I'm gonna apply the second layer, but it's super easy. I and mean, you're just supposed to do like a really rough job. So this looks like terrible right now, but I guess this is what it's supposed to look like before you put the second coat on. Boss, you watch out for that paint. <laughs> All right, so it's about half an hour later and I am ready to start on coat number two. I don't know, it's uh, it's interesting. I want a little bit of a more like distressed look. So we'll see, I know Mirk really wants more of a distress. So we'll see what I do. Now this is how it's dried for coat number one. So now coat number two, it'll probably have more of a matte finish. I'm excited, here we go. Valspar chalky paint. What I did though, because this table does have a leaf in it, I after I painted everything, I did separate it just because I didn't want the paint to dry and possibly stick in between the separation for the leaf. The leaf is down here and painted. So I'm going to let this dry completely. I'm probably gonna give this probably a good hour. And then I'm gonna come in with my sanding strips and distress it and sand it and we're gonna see what we end up with. I don't know if I love it yet. I don't know if I hate it. We'll see what happens. All right, so it is about an hour later and the table for the most part is dry. There's still a couple wet areas, so I'm gonna avoid those. But it's now time to sand. So what I'm gonna do is not sand the whole table, but I'm gonna add some distressing kind of naturally to where you normally would get distressing on a table. So like the legs or edges, um, especially where my little one would be around the top. I'm a nervous because I really have no clue. This is when I really have no idea what I'm doing. But Catherine from Doing the Dime says that really you can't screw it up. And if you take off too much or distress too much if you don't like something, all you gotta do is add some more chalk paint. So she recommended using 220 grit sandpaper. So I have regular sandpaper. I also have this little, what do you call it, like a sanding sponge, which I thought would be good for the corner. So I'm gonna try, see what we can come up with. Okay, so we have developed kind of our own way of distressing this furniture in a way that we like. We worked on the leaf. We took a few stabs at it to kind of figure out how we like it. So now we've come up with this. So what we're doing is we're doing just a really light coat, just like one streak of a wet paintbrush. And then we're taking sandpaper and running over top of it. And this is a hundred grade medium grit. sand grit. This is a hundred grit. I'm trying to pretend like I know what I'm talking about. This is a hundred grit sandpaper. So over top of the wet paint, I'm just doing like a wipe just, and it's all natural. And it pulls up the old, and, the other yeah, it pulls up the other stuff. It's looking really cool. Okay, so I'll show you what we're doing. distressed everything, Merrick went over the table with some 320 grain sandpaper, just really, really lightly, and then we brushed it off with a dry, clean paintbrush, and that seems to do a really good job of just smoothing everything out. So after we sanded it down with the 320, Merrick just brushes over it with a really, really light, clean paintbrush. That just gets all the dust particles off, and it just makes it so nice and smooth, so it'll be a perfect perfect surface to put that polyurethane on. So we have distressed this table and kind of have it down to a fine science right now. For us. Yeah. For us, it works. We have no idea what we're doing, but we're so happy and this was so much fun. So you know what? To get us through a couple more years with this kitchen table, distressing this, I think it's given it 
new life. So we're just gonna let this dry. We're gonna go have supper, come back, put on the polyurethane coat. Then we kinda have a new kitchen table, which is fantastic. I'm so excited. So now it is time to put the top coat on. I'm so excited. So this polyurethane top coat, you only need one coat. And we're getting, we got the one that's like resistant to water stains and everything. So let's try this out and see. This town so lame, I'm feeling so wired. It's 4 a.m. I'm not even hey, girl! Yeah, Eva! We can drive away. Yeah, you're helping. Hey, Eva and Mecky. doing all right, you So, I think that is it for this table. One thing that we learned is we weren't sure. You don't need a lot. If you put on too much of this polyurethane, it actually turns into almost like a gel. Yeah, so I don't think you use the right brushes, but we put on too much, but it's drying really quickly. Also, our table's old, so that our table might just be thirsty and soaking it in. But I think next up, let this dry, and then I'll show you guys tomorrow. kitchen table it is the next day and we went to bring the table inside and it broke <laughs> so all of that work and the leg of the kitchen table like literally snapped in half so it was just waiting to break and we've had it for a while so maybe the wood was just brittle and dry I don't know so too bad we were so proud of ourselves with how that DIY turned out so it's not the DIY's fault the DIY worked out really well so I highly recommend that you try that and I think I'm gonna try my hand at a couple other things but say la vie the kitchen table is gone so now we need a new kitchen table but we're also in the process of getting a new couch so we bought this fantastic sectional from lazy boy and that's arriving tomorrow so if it fits in the door. If it fits in the door because it's a big couch. We're saying goodbye to our old IKEA couch. Good riddance. God bless this couch. It's it's seen better days. It's uh it's well worn, it's well loved, but it's time to say goodbye. We're also getting rid of our carpets. So very exciting. This is all about home reno, so now we need a new kitchen table. But we're getting a new couch. What do you think, Ava? Just relax. Woo! So we are so excited. We just got our new Lazy Boy couch. I feel like an adult. It's a big couch though. It's a lot of couch. I'm sorry, Bust. You are not allowed on this couch, buddy. But this couch, it's awesome. So there is a recliner here and over there. There, it plugs in, but there's also a battery. Yeah, it plugs in. There's also a battery pack. But I love it. It's so beautiful. But it's really tall. It's a lot of couch when you first come in. Right. So this video didn't end up how I thought it would. Our kitchen table broke after we tried to refurbish it. However, I am loving this new couch. So thanks for watching this little DIY. And new furniture delivery, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!